mission schools and remote schools as they were called was a real connotation of um, less. So we, con we had a, a number of planning sessions involving each community and across communities uh, to bamp out a bit of a future. And we've put a few things into place, but the Chris Sara and Sherberg Institute program uh, came to our attention from a number of means. So we had a meeting with Chris and we're fortunate to send a couple of people over to pilot. One of those was Brother Jim. One of the things that, that I came back with was to recommend to the Director of Catholic Education that anyone who, uh, any new principal coming into our schools, it should be part of their induction program which basically means that within their first 12 months of appointment they should do the Strongest Smarter Leadership Program. Good afternoon. My name is Cathy Wilson and I am an elder of the Larrakia Nation. And I'll ask the spirits of my ancestors to watch over you and protect you while you carry out your mission on my country. We had people from Catholic Ed attend Sherbold last year and they came back very enthusiastic and very passionate and um, we believe in what they're doing, um, we have a lot of trust in what they're doing, we're looking forward to being led through the week. We deal exclusively with secondary aged Indigenous kids and it's a boarding school, everyone lives on site including all the staff. Education, you got Kado, you got Western, all coming together, which is what we are trying to do at Wade. Muruputianu mean about crashing through the waves. And three really important words for us are integration, being and reflection in our kids. Where kids like to be by themselves, out boys. The week is going to be a lot about remembering and connecting and honouring each other and about the sacred space that's created in between us here in the centre. So I'm feeling very humbled and very privileged to be here with you all. You all are. Yes. Two rules. Share them out so everybody's happy and play your role. Everybody got a bit of paper? Game on. Greg's on his way. And white ones and the ones I need. And I also need red. And I need black as well. Yeah. You need to share. Could you be sitting the rod to everybody? I expect you all to respect me. I have never been in a place where somebody is talking about the age. I expect you to. There is no respect here. <laughs> Concept. Don't look at this. No, that's mine. That's mine. You can't have that. Because all you're doing is me sharing. You've got all that there and you haven't talked about it. You haven't shared any of that yet. Show me how you share then I can think about it. And that'll be a change of culture. One minute. Come back. One minute. Well, I am the elder and I am the one who is supposed to hand them out and you are supposed to respect that tradition. It's been going on for 2,000 years and I'm the elder and I've waited Excuse all my life me, to be the elder. If you say that once more, I'm going to have to leave this time. Well, that's okay. That'll be more jelly beans for the rest of us. <laughs> I'm not really interested in what everyone else wants. When things become too difficult, you still got to engage with it. you still got to stick with it. you still got to try and get through it as part of this leadership stuff. And in my culture, it's perfectly acceptable <laughs> to grab as much as you can eat. And I was obeying that because I was the one that believed in this role that I had gone out and worked hard to achieve this. A whole lot of little lessons in me. Pretty well got a full success rate now of um, the principals now five schools by the end of this week will have done the strongest smart leadership program. Uh, we've got uh, deputy principals, we've got curriculum coordinators, we've got uh, teacher assistants, we've got um, indigenous coordinators within the school. So it's a, it's a whole mix. And the good thing about the program is that there is no class distinction. Everyone comes 
as someone who can contribute to the school as best they can according to whatever role they carry. This morning's session is really to talk about the strong and smart philosophy and how that applied at Sherbrooke School. Um, and just to get a look at, and then afterwards we can, we can sort of get underneath, underneath that. And we believe that if we can um, give a range of people the opportunity, we've obviously got 20 people on it at the moment from our four communities and five schools, but if we can embed that with all of our people over the next few years, we have to be stronger, smarter leaders in our communities. I, I, I talk about strong and smart in your own schools and places working. You might talk about other sorts of Aboriginal identity, but think about which one your your personally colluded, which one do you make okay, uh, which one do you validate, which one does the school confirm, does it confirm one that's that's anchored in victim status or delinquency or something like that, or does it does it challenge that and, and it have expectations about a stronger, smarter identity. Um, and the last, last question, is my school a school that Aboriginal children can connect with? So, you don't have to come up with any answers now, just think about those things. Kangaroo dog, grass, which is odd one out? Grass. Grass, grass. Grass. Anybody any different? Dog. Dog? Dog. Why dog? How is he different? Grass, can we Well, dog, uh, um, um, is a carnival, uh, and the kangaroo eats grass. That'd be weird. Uh -huh. The reason why I've asked that question is some people think that they think in categories, so they'll categorise the two animals, the dog and the kangaroo. And other people think in relationships, the kangaroo eating the grass. So they'll make a decision on that and on that alone. And it's sitting out of their awareness, they don't even think about it. We have to work on giving people an opportunity to form themselves more deeply, to value their own self-esteem and leadership capacity. So at the end of the program, I don't expect people to go back to their schools and go bang, bang, bang with change. I want them to feel better about themselves and feel better about the job they're doing. And it's really about their personal formation. And obviously having a cohort of people go through makes that a stronger process in each community. I don't know where strong and smart happens. I think it's, it happens in a lot of places. It's got to happen within the heart of the individual, but it's also got to happen within the culture of the community. The community has to support the, the kids in their education, um, because otherwise it's a much harder uphill battle. Place, I belong, I'm connected to this place. Face, Teachers and community are there and they say you belong and they connect with as a web of support for our young people. And space. On that school side, even though we're 10% in the school, there's our teaching spaces that are for our Indigenous community. There's a community centre space which comes into our school space. And in actual fact, there is no line of separation between community involvement, community engagement and teaching and learning. They can be one and the same thing. And if we actually start running that line, and start involving community in the process, in the act of teaching and learning, then we can kind of hit both targets at the same time, the cultural knowledge target and also the community involvement. And I feel really strong about who I am and, and I want to be more, more of this. I want to be smarter, I want to be stronger, I am already, man, I'm already smart, I'm already strong, but more, I want to be more, you know? And, and, and this, this, this gathering that, that, that we are at is very much the one that I, as a person, was looking for. A leader, looking for leaders, you know, leaders. Our people, our indigenous people. And today I'm grateful because our kids learning Tiwi as their first language. And English is their second language. And my strong statement is, you know, 
Um, there's a lot of criticism about bilingual education <coughs> in our system. And if we lose our language, we'll lose our culture. We don't know who we are. And I feel very strong about bilingual programs. Uh, it was probably one of the things that really affected me when I was doing the, the course to look at my own biases. Um, did I really believe that Indigenous children can learn just as well, are as intelligent as anyone else? Uh, and I certainly was challenged with that. Um, and so it was something I was able to take back. It was good. It's a good workshop for me to be strong inside me and be smarter. I want to be smart and I want to be stronger, you know? So when I go back to the community, I can see what I want to do. My biggest challenge is to change the community and change my people to be a better people, you know? A smarter people themselves. Personally, it, it just, it hit a note. Um, that I feel I've been able to also then hit with people on, on our staff. Uh, and that's been exciting because it's created another journey and more journeys um, spreading out from there. So um, I think it's been life changing for me, but it's also meant that I've been able to, in a little way, impact on other lives as well, which has been exciting. It really created for me, what the program did for me, was really created for me. Um, a colossal renaissance, I suppose I could say, in my very deep-seated beliefs um, that quality programs need to be in schools, quality teachers who form, you know, strong relationships um, and that we have really high expectations for our students. And then to be really looking at how, you know, okay, how can I make this happen, you know, when I think I we all think that we're kind of working towards that, but to be confronted as we were with the, the actual rigour of, okay, you go and do it now, was, was just a really powerful thing. Like helping, Ngarawana uh, Tri. Uh, Ngarawana Tri means to help, help each other, you know, to support the school with the kids. Like, getting the elders, parents, and other, other organisations, you know, to support, you know, the school. What was being said here conflicts with the accepted, you know, what most people are thinking, uh, particularly around having high expectations of students. I mean, we say that, but then we ignore that when we're working with um, Aboriginal students or even students with just special other learning needs. We abandon that and just lower expectations. I like the Stronger Smarter uh, concept and just those two words. I mean, it doesn't matter. It, uh, it just has to do with working with young people and working as an educator. You know, it's an expectation that we should have of our staff to be stronger and smarter. It's an expectation that we should um, have of ourselves to be stronger and smarter, you know. Don't keep, don't keep pointing out the problems, all right? We know what the problems are, or, you know, you've got to identify them, but just get on with the solution. I want them to be, you know, to learn both ways, to balance too well, to be together. We learn English, but inside us, and then we learn our own language, our own culture. So me, I've got two cultures inside me like me. First I got I learned my culture. Now I'm going forward to learn Western culture. So wherever I go I'll be two people I'll be a two person. I'll have two culture in me. It's all about self esteem. And the stronger smarter program is something that really challenges the children to do that. To, to believe in themselves, to believe that they're as good as anyone else, and when they take up that challenge, they sure are.